This episode may contain moderately strong language and themes. I'm Emma Clark, a professional voiceover. Welcome to Dodgy Voiceover Direction, the podcast that celebrates dodgy voiceover direction. I mean, the clues in the title, really, isn't it? Welcome to Dodgy Voiceover Direction with Emma Clark. It was a grey day in early spring. I remember it because I was revving up for the Easter break. I was preparing to close up the studio for a long weekend of slouching on the sofa, stress-eating a variety of maize-based snacks, getting off my face on Netflix and trying to achieve a body that was 70% cocoa solids by Sunday lunchtime when the email arrived. It was a communique from a regular client. We'd worked together for years, since I made my first sojourn into the voiceover business, somewhere in the 1870s. The subject line was arresting. Ergnet, it said. I surmised this was a typo. Ergnet, read and react immediately. I was drawn in by the cop show-esque vibe as if the writer of the email had himself been subsumed by Netflix crime dramas and had consequently adopted a kind of catch-the-perp-style banter, which I found inexplicably sensual. I opened the email. Attached was a script for a male grooming product. Being Easter, I'd expected a last-minute ad for chocolate or perhaps a commercial for a family fun day that featured the words EGCITING, EGCELLENT, and perhaps even there would be no charismas if there were no Easter, which I admit I have said before for money, even though it makes no sense. But no, this was a product designed to make men feel butch. Fleetingly, I wondered why it was urgent. At Easter. Was it part of some throwback pagan fertility festival where men went around panic-buying grooming products to try to cop off and impregnate somebody, a bit like that scene in Midsummer? I suspected this was the case. I mean, I know it happens in Stockport. My eyes flickered over the body of the email. Apparently, a sales exec had forgotten to put this job into production because, and I'm quoting here, he's an incompetent arse. It was due on air within the hour and I had no option but to use my mouth to bound to the rescue and record it in my professional voiceover booth. I opened the script and, without reading through it, printed it off. I like to hold a script in my clammy hands when I'm reading it because it connects me to the words and encourages authenticity I can't muster with an iPad that's covered in jam and spittle. Anyway, I lurched into the studio and settled into my special recording chair. It was then that I read the direction. Dear Emma Clark, we need you to sound like a D-cop, but caring, doable. My first thought was obviously about breasts, but then I was struck by a different thought. Maybe, just maybe, he wants me to sound like a bra. Either way, breasts were definitely going to feature. Since the dawn of commercial radio, female voiceovers have been hired to sound sexy. I've even had customers ask me to sound less sexy. I know, ridiculous, isn't it? But using sex to sell products and services is the backboner of advertising. I recorded a tasteful yet alluring read that could, in some circles, be described as invoking the décolletage of an accessible sex siren, the kind of woman a man might see on a tube train and be inspired to write a song about, a bit like James Blunt did, but more Eurovision than Sad Sack. That, I was sure, fulfilled the brief. I attached the audio file to an email. Out of interest, I wrote, I'm assuming you wanted me to read this as if I'm a D-cup woman and not an item of D-cup clothing or a lactating mother. 
By the way, I added, can you sound like the kind of man who fills a jockstrap? I added a smiley emoji to take the edge off. Listener, he didn't reply. So I never knew, but have always wondered about his answer. Later, my mind returned to his use of the word doable. I'd assumed he was asking if I had the vocal skills to invoke a buxom chest, but it struck me that he might have been asking me to sound, you know, doable, which is an entirely different matter altogether. You've been listening to Dodgy Voiceover Direction with Emma Clark. Rate the show, write us a review, and tell your friends. Thanks for listening. That's it for this episode of Dodgy Voiceover Direction. Find out more about me and my work at emmaclark.com. There's an E on the end of Clark, by the way. Listen to my stuff, read my blog, and if you want to know more, sign up for my newsletter. If you enjoyed this show, give us a rating, hopefully a good one, and leave a review, and tell your mates. If you find me endlessly fascinating, unlikely, I know, but a girl can hope, you can check out the music I write. You see, I'm also a classical composer. And the music podcasts I make, Before the Bar Opens and the title track. All my music stuff is at ebclark.com. See you next time on Dodgy Voiceover Direction.